to the Stateless Codecast. This is video number eight in our Ruby Gems Nerd Dice series. So we've released our our gem. We did a little bit of house cleaning after it, and now we want to figure out what we're going to do next. And uh, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at our GitHub issues log, and we're going to start. Um, using that as an uh, an agile work intake process. So um, there are a couple different types of uh, project management, just in general, a couple philosophies. So you've got the the waterfall philosophy, where you you plan out all of your project in advance. You uh, execute. Uh, you you do a business case usually, and um, then clearly define your requirements, and then you execute the project. And then, um, and then you're done. Uh, it, it, which could work on a, I'm, a, I'm a one person project, so I could potentially uh, plan a ton of stuff out in advance and um, write really detailed requirements and then execute on it. Uh, but even then, there's a, a danger that I'll invest all this effort and never release anything to production. Maybe I get. Um, uh, 50, 100, who knows how many hours into it. And then I'm uh, so concerned with releasing perfect software that I never release any software. So um, we've been kind of under the hood using Agile um, principles in order to, to re release our version 0 0.1 of this gem. So we, we didn't release a perfect... Uh, Gem, we didn't release a full featured gem. It had uh, one uh, one working method, but it worked. Uh, it wasn't completely free from uh, technical debt, so there were some RuboCop violations that we kind of deferred um, deferred resolving until later. Uh, but the idea with Agile is that you want to get um, deliver working software out the door, and then um, kind of either if you've got stakeholders get feedback from your stakeholders or if you're yourself uh, try it out and um, maybe use it in some projects and figure out what work, what works or what doesn't uh, even in this case where I'm not yet including it in a project what I can do is I can use the github issues section here as a backlog to work out of so um, I can go in and uh, each of these uh, items here uh, can be an issue. It, issues aren't just broken code items. So uh, if we look at the labels, we have uh, the ability to tag issues. So you can um, tag it as a bug, uh, documentation, um, enhancement. I'm going to add in a new label here. And we're going to call this one technical excellence. provide an ex, uh, description. So typically the, the, the term used is technical debt, but I want to have this be, for example, if we want to add in um, a continuous integration on this gem, the, the, you're not really uh, dealing with technical debt that you have to um, remediate in that case. You're, you're just improving your overall capital and in infrastructure and uh, reducing the number of manual things that you have to do. So that's why I'm um, I'm going with that. So I'll type a description here. So I've got my description here, issues related to improving the technical excellence um, of the project or reducing technical debt. Uh, let me see here. We'll use green, kind of this vibrant green as our color for technical excellence, um, kind of uh, using the, the theme of uh, growth and sustainability and all those things. So we'll create that label. So now we've got our technical excellence label. So uh, the first thing we can do is go through our, our existing backlog. Um, so right now, so we have this discussion about the use of 
uh, our randomizer. I'm going to add some labels to this. So we're going to add technical excellence to this. We're going to add enhancement and um, I'm not going to call this a bug because we were just right now we, we just have that total dice method um, so we'll, um, we'll use those and uh, it might just save them immediately when I do it let's see what happens if I do a full page refresh yeah it looks like it did so we've got our labels for that and then we've got our our item other item here so this is a uh, this is a bug so we added that that tag to it uh, you can see it it shows up when you do this uh, and then in our code we have a commit that fixes this. It's the most recent commit on on our 0 0.1 branch. So we'll go to that. Here's the commit. Um, so Generate checksums, and then this is the the fix to that change alt log URI. So we're going to see if we can add our commit SHA to this item. Let's see if we can close with comment here. So that works. Links to the to the commit that um, that fixed it. Ideally, in the, in the future, and w when we do this, we'll we'll wind up uh, tagging issues when, in our commit messages themselves, so that it will automatically um, link the um, the commit to uh, any open issues. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start um, kind of brainstorming and dreaming up some of the things we want to do on this um, on this item by creating new issues. We can go in and um, we'll, we'll, we can do some uh, code snippets uh, using the, um, as, as you can see here, I'll go to the existing one here. So if you go into the code um, snippet here, if I wanted to edit this you can see whenever you use the the three back ticks and then Ruby and then three back ticks kind of at the end of your uh, block and you can do this for bash or JavaScript or anything else um, it gives you syntax hiding and highlighting and gives you um, blocks of code that you can refer to so we'll cancel that and then we'll go in and we'll we'll populate some stuff into our backlog I'll pause the video to do that and then we'll take a look at it. Uh, one more thing before I pause. So just because you, um, if you're working alone, doesn't mean that you can't um, um, work in an agile manner. So, so I will, uh, I'll make a, a pitch here for this, uh, this item, um, th th this website, scrumof1.com. So um, kind of thinking uh, this is a website uh, by a guy named Merrill Lamont, uh, who's a very interesting person, who uh, just started n doing normal day-to-day -day activities using a, um, a, a a Scrum backlog and kind of moving things, whether they're with sticky notes or whatnot, from 
uh, to do in progress done and kind of reflecting on uh, those things and doing a uh, retrospective. So I would highly recommend if you um, want to are interested in um, kind of the agile way of, of thinking, uh, be sure to, to favorite scrumofone.com. So now I'll go back um, and um, we'll go in and populate our backlog. So we've at least got a, uh, a bit of a backlog populated now. So we had our, our initial items here. Um, and we resolved the, uh, the RAND one, and, or the, the one about the, um, uh, we'll look at our closed issue, the change log uh, link. We, we've resolved that one. And then we've got new ones here. We've tagged the old ones uh, with, our, with our labels. And then we've also put a couple of, uh, you can go into um, your issues and add some milestones to them. So if I want to put this configuration um, item, I can set milestone it to 0 0.2. And now it's there. If I go back to the issues, we can also um, do a um, refer from to one issue um, by the other. So if we go here, um, oops, we've got a messed up body here because I didn't put the Ruby syntax, so it's treating it as normal Mac markdown. Anyway, so now we've got this um, this item here. I can add um, a here that notes that it blocks my issue number one and I can go to issue number one and it will have um, that it mentioned um, the issue so you can keep links between uh, between your issues uh, and you can uh, go and uh, provide uh, information about that the one thing that this um, kind of uh, falls a little bit short, at least so far from what I know from um, using it and my experience using GitHub issues as an, uh, an agile backlog mechanism is limited is the, um, the inability to, to order your, uh, your backlog. So uh, ideally you'd have something where you could like drag stuff up, drag stuff down, uh, but we'll, we'll work around that and, um, and uh, use it, but it at least gives us uh, kind of a backlog to work out of for our future videos and then in the event that we decide um, a video is uh, running long and it's too much for one commit but I have an idea that I want to do for another uh, another feature or I discover something that um, I want to deal with the Rubocop later or something like that we can go and uh, add an issue to the backlog so we don't forget about it and that kind of becomes our our uh, source for our our new work and enhancements on the gem. And again, um, I might do this as a separate video at some point in the future, but I'm um, I'm very much a fan of the agile um, process of doing things and the. Um, the, the Agile principles. So if we go just Google um, Agile Ma Manifesto, we'll uh, provide you with the um, kind of the original Agile Manifesto, the 12 principles of Agile software. Uh, some of these might be controversial to some people, but I, I'm uh, I, I was um, 
a bit skeptical at first, but I've really become a, a believer in the why of agile. Um, even if you're, you're not somebody, I'm the type of person who's better at top down strategic thinking. Um, but I, I've learned that you, you, you don't know all the answers in advance. Um, and, uh, especially the larger a project gets, the the more you want to break things down, deliver small increments of value, um, reflect on it, run an experiment, see how you can get better. And um, the the kind of the Soviet style five year plan of I I know uh, all these things that I'm I'm going to execute uh, this scope by this date with this amount amount of resources. Uh, you're, you're just setting yourself up for failure. Um, and if you're the Soviets, starving people. But um, so you just kind of do the, find the, the highest priority thing you can that delivers value. And then you will, um, you, you can make incremental uh, progress. You can um, kind of break, break things down into chunks, evaluate the value of one thing versus another. Um, but um, it, it's a, an effective and useful uh, mechanism for planning, even if you're doing something solo. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.